Here we have an expression where we want to simplify and state the restrictions uh, in the denominators. So what we have here is a combination of multiplication and division of rational expressions. What I'm going to do first is try to factor as much as I can numerators and denominators of all these fractions all at the same time. And in the process, I want to identify restrictions along the way. So let's start off with our first uh, fraction up at the top. So I have this 2a plus 5b and it's all squared. What I'm going to do is actually just rewrite that but in expanded form. I'm not going to multiply it out. I just want to separate so I see the factors explicitly. So I have 2a plus 5b times 2a plus 5b. After all, when you square something, you're multiplying it by itself twice. And that's all over 3a minus 4b, which in this case, we cannot do anything. Now the second fraction, I notice that my numerator is actually a difference of squares. 16b squared, that becomes 4b, and the 9a squared becomes 3a. And so that's the minus, and then I have 4b plus 3a. Close bracket, and there we have it. In my denominator, same thing. I have a difference of squares. Again, 4 and 25 are both perfect squares. Uh, a squared and b squared are also both perfect squares. So I end up with 2a minus 5b and 2a plus 5b. And for my last fraction, I'm going to keep the division. I have 3a plus 4b. Well, nothing can be done there. 4b. And I have 2a minus 5b. So there we have it. There is our expression all factored out. And we're now going to look at the restrictions. So we're going to start off with the first denominator here. I have 3a minus 4b. This means that 3a cannot equal 4b. So there's our first restriction. In the second fraction, our denominators, we have two factors, 2a minus 5b and 2a plus 5b. In both cases, I cannot have 2a equal either the positive or the negative of 5b. Again, replace 2a with positive or negative 5b and you will get a zero in your denominator. Finally, uh, our last denominator here. Well, notice how this matches up with this one here. We've already considered that case with the positive 5b, so we don't have to state it again. It's actually taken care of in the previous denominator. So let me just remove all these underlines here, clean things up. And for now, I'm going to put these restrictions over to the sides. So let me just copy this and then move it, move it over to the side here. And same thing over here. I'm going to copy this and bring it over here, just so I have space to work. Now we forgot one more, and that has to do with the fact that since we're dividing at the very end, we also cannot have our numerator equal to zero. Now in this case, it's 3a plus 4b. This will eliminate the possibility of 3a equaling negative 4b. So 3a cannot be negative 4b as well. And again, these two together, I can just, instead of writing 3a not equal to negative 4b, I can write it a bit more compactly and just say 3a is not equal to positive or negative 4b, just like the one above. So we actually have four restrictions on our uh, denominators, and eventual denominator. So now let's change that division sign into a multiplication. I'm going to copy this all the way because nothing's going to change here. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to be interchanging the numerator and denominator of the last fraction. So I'll just write that out. So I get 2a minus 5b on top, 
I'm going to put this in brackets just so you can distinguish it. And then I have 3a plus 4b on the bottom. I'll bracket that as well. Now we're in a good position to start canceling common, uh, common factors. So I notice here the 2a and the minus 5b will disappear. The 3a plus 4b, well, that's this here, just in different order. I have 3a minus 4b. Uh, we'll look at that in a bit. 2a plus 5b over here and over here. And I'll leave it like that for now. Let's bring down everything that's left over. So I have the 2a plus 5b. Again, I'm, I'm looking at this here, this here, and this here. That's all that's left. And that's times 4b minus 3a all over 3a minus 4b. Now it looks like these two could possibly cancel out. It's just that the order is reversed and we can't just interchange, we can't just commute um, two terms when there's a, a negative sign in between them, okay? However, what we can do is commute them and introduce a negative sign. Again, it's a trick we've learned before. What we do is we put the 4b in front and the negative 3a after it in brackets and a negative 1 in front. Now these match up and we're left with 2a plus 5b over negative 1, which ends up being negative 2a minus 5b. And your restrictions are stated above uh, over here. As long as you have them stated somewhere, you're good to go. And here's our final answer.